Hi all, welcome to part 3 of the video lecture on structured query language. See, uh, we already gone through some of the basic, uh, basic SQL commands. Now it's time for us to explore something called as how we can specify constraints in SQL. SQL. Uh, so when we create a table and all that time, we discuss this topic also like we have, I hope you remember the constraints of relational model like not null constraint is there. Uh, uniqueness constraint is there referential integrity constraint is there so how we can mention all of them so when we created the table that time we saw this but uh, now we will see this more detail okay uh, so first of all how we can specify the default value and the attribute constraint the main attribute constraint is of course a not null constraint so if you want a particular attribute uh, like it, it should not contain any no, null value you can specify this like this uh, and you know right so whenever you are declaring a variable uh, i mean attribute along with the attribute name data type you will just write like a not null say, saying that when whenever the user try to insert a value for that particular attribute the user is not supposed to give a null value if the user is giving null value it will be shown as a tbms error okay so this is always a implicitly specified so you know uh, entity in integrity constraint so if it is a primary key if some attribute you are declaring as primary key then no need to specify it as uh, not null explicitly because primary key attributes are by default not null okay so we are not going to allow null value for the primary key so uh, that uh, not null constraint is implicitly therefore primary key okay uh, but for other attribute if you want them to be not null you have to mention it explicitly now another thing is like you can mention the default value for a given attribute if no value uh, is uh, specified by the user when he inserted a value into the database in that time this default value will be assumed okay so that also you can declare uh, i mean when you create the table you can uh, mention it like a default using default class uh, followed by the default value like that you can mention the default value for a given attribute so the default value is included in any new tuple if an explicit value is not provided by um, uh, by the user for that particular attribute right mm, if no default value clause is specified then uh, if value is absent then null will be assumed provided it is uh, not having that not null constraint if not null constraint is there default value is also not there and uh, you are not explicitly giving a value for that particular attribute it will be an error that's all so it is something like this when you create a table so department number is an attribute int is a data type right here you can mention the domain name if you want the not null is a constraint and the default value is specified like one so if no value is entering uh, for a given department uh, tuple or row that time this one will be assumed as a default department number now you can mention uh, some so so yeah primary key is uh, mentioned so that is given a constraint like like constraint uh, employee primary key something like that so we are mentioning this social security number as a primary key and uh, now we have a, uh, a referential integrity so every constraint is given a name like this okay so that is this line and this line now um, there is another constraint that is a foreign key constraint this uh, employee table is having the supervisor SSN okay so this is a um, what we call as uh, here and empl every employee is supposed to have a supervisor and that supervisor is also an employee so this table is trying to refer itself okay so the foreign key is uh, set like a supervisor SSN attribute of the employee table that references the same employee table where the primary key is SSN so towards that SSN this reference will be there and similarly there is another uh, constraint specified as um, uh, to uh, to get the details of the uh, department where this employee is working so we have this foreign key which is department number and that references the department table uh, primary key say d number so like that you can mention okay and uh, for all these constraints they are giving a name like this now in addition to that it is mentioned like uh, on delete set null or on update cascade and you know what is what it is we already discussed when we discussed the constraints uh, in relational model like whenever you are deleting uh, something from the employee table so for example okay so th this one is, um, is from the same table some other entries will be deleted so le let's take this example uh, a particular department information is being deleted okay so something you are deleting from the referred relation and that time all the references that you made in the employee table so who are all working in the department number say five if you deleted that department all those uh, what you will do with those references okay so you can so if such a deletion is happening you can set a department number to be the default department number so that is this one 
and if you are trying to update it uh, do propagate that updation here also the department number is uh, safe for the time being it is 5 now you are updating it to say um mm, five zero or something accordingly do that change in the referencing relation also so for update we have the cascade option for deletion we have the set to default option so like that we can set okay similarly the department table manager assassin uh, is not null and the default value is given like this here we have primary key as uh, d number Mm, and it department name is unique so that is defined by another clause called it unique foreign is manager assistance that references the employee table and on delete set default option we have and on update we have a cascade option similarly project location and uh, other things okay so this is how you can mention the constraint and more constraints can also be specified and this is another way like a check clause so how one can use this check clause see department number we are having and it is an integer value not null now we have suppose we have a, a restriction like this uh, say what the department the uh, department number is restricted to be any value if it is valid it should be an integer between 1 and 20 so that checking you can done using this check clause what you have to do is just write check this d number value should be greater than 0 and d number should be less than 21 so at any time whenever a new value is inserted this checking will be done automatically and if there is a violation from this it will be reported as an error or uh, a warning to the user accordingly the user can correct it and end so if we have such a constraint so that you can impose like this okay now either you can uh, apply this check clause along with the attributed definition or when you define the domain so sometimes we will be defining so this integer uh, not null this is the complete domain of this d number attribute right so so here along with the attribute definition you are saying what is the data type it should not contain null value and all now the entire thing if you want you can define as a domain say i'm having a domain uh, the domain name is d underscore num so the domain of the d number field is given a name d underscore num and the domain is defined as integer with this check constraint okay now uh, instead of writing all those things you can just write like d number space d underscore num so that this meaning will be implied okay so that the check clause you can either use directly with the attribute definition or you can use it along with the domain um, when you create the domain and that domain name can be used instead of the um, the full um, so instead of referring the actual data type and the check clause in the um, attribute definition okay something like that yeah uh, specifying key constraint that is another one you know what is the key and you know out of uh, many keys one will be selected at the primary and remaining will be unique and all those things you can specify uh, say using the keyword primary key so if you want d number to be primary key so when you uh, declare that particular i mean when you create a table you specify the attribute and d number that time you will mention the data type and you will make it as primary key so if it is a single attribute along with the attribute you can use this keyword and you can make it as a primary key now if the primary key is made up of more than one attribute then you can specify it explicitly like this so uh, primary key so here you are writing like a primary key what is the primary key here single attribute if this is the case along with the, uh, this attributed definition if you want you can use this primary key constraint that way also you can define but if the primary key is consist of more than one attributes this is the only way okay uh, so otherwise um, it, it will not work so just um, you write like this primary key in bracket put all the attribute names that together form the primary key okay so similarly you can define a variable to be unique uh, by attaching this unique uh, keyboard along with the attribute definition or you can uh, define it like a unique of this particular attribute like that also okay so that about it so all those things are uh, specified along with the table creation now what about the referential integrity constraint that also we gone through uh, typically we define what is a foreign key and where in which table in which attribute it is referring uh, right uh, now we have different options like uh, uh, when you delete or uh, update something uh, whether you want to re restrict the operation if uh, mm, some references are there uh, for the one for example you are deleting a department with the department number five uh, so you can restrict the operation provided all the references to five are uh, already deleted so like that you can warn the user or you can set the options like a set null set default or say cascade option and you know how these things are working we already explained it so you please watch the uh, basics uh, videos of relational model you will get uh, uh, detailed uh, understanding of these things okay where i explained with the examples and all so once you are deleting you can set it as null or you can set the default value or you can propagate that deletion to the referencing table also similarly for the update okay so that about it now 
so these are all the constraints and uh, uh, so this is how these things are defined mainly this foreign key constraint and the primary con key constraint they are important actually and this not null default those things also so when you create the table you should have a complete awareness like which are all the uh, requirement we are having for each attribute or if you want you can use that check constraint right every many options we have so uh, do this creation of the table in in the right way now suppose you created already um, and you forgot to add some constraints you, you have the facility to add them later by using another uh, data definition language ddl uh, command like alter so just like create table we have another uh, sql statement called alter table by which you can edit it also that we will see so yeah now and uh, one just see one more uh, keyword that is distinct so this is also something i already told you so when you are looking at any sql query the result of the sql query is not going to be a relation or a set okay so by default this relational algebra will ensure that so if you have that formal language relational algebra there uh, we have the uh, constraint that whenever any relational algebraic expression is applied the result of the relational algebraic expression should be a relation in the sense it should be a set of tuples okay so the elements we will not allow um, uh, means we will not allow duplicates if duplicates are there that will be automatically uh, deleted by relational algebra but in sql is not going to do that sql will preserve the duplicates so by default the result of sql or the sql table which is uh, re resulting out of some sql operation is not going to be a set instead it is a multi set or you can call it as a bag in the sense the elements are repeating now if you want it to be like relational algebra you are not going to allow that repetition you want that duplicate filtering then you can use a keyword called distinct this is additionally available in sql and using which this duplicates can be eliminated Mm, when it comes to SQL, okay. So these are all different things. So I'm quickly explaining these things because it is easy to understand, right? So just go through the examples, you will understand. Fine. Yeah, that about it. Some more things we will see in the next video.